Well, Kenny, you've been to so many places. What do you think of this joint? It is. It's a, it's a phenomenal working environment. You know, when the minute we, the minute we walked into it, the kind of eyes lit up. Uh, I mean, it's a proper facility. Like top, top level pitches are great. Uh, the building and the setup is, is excellent. I mean, the lads want for nothing. Walking in here, getting to know the lads, getting to know the staff, enjoying the surroundings. You know, it's, a, it's an amazing place to come to work. Look, you and Carl, or, or the boss as you call him, yeah, perfectly versed to be able to pass on that message to young players about how good these facilities are. Because when you started, when he started, it was nothing like this. Not at all. I mean, I think back, I think back to around about the 2000 mark. There was only a few teams that probably had facilities back like, like this back in England. I think, and at Rangers, we opened up in 2001, and again, it was probably one of the first ones of its kind at that moment. But uh, yeah, so you, when, you, when you're brought up in these kind of surroundings, it, you can kind of take them for granted, but I can assure the, the young lads, the, the, the message getting passed on to them is it's not like this everywhere. You know, I had the last couple of years of my career uh, where it was back to the old days, they report them to the stadium, getting changed, jumping into the car and going to whatever local venue you could get. So it's, uh, it's a special place to be, you know, and it's, uh, it's up to us to, to enjoy it, get the players working and, and buying into what the manager does. But there's no better place to actually be doing it, you know, because like I said, you want for nothing. You've got everything at your fingertips. What do you think so far and what you've seen in the playing group? I know it's only early on. Uh, well, we're short, obviously, on numbers. I think that's, uh, that, goes, uh, that goes without saying. But what it does is it allows you to have a look at the younger players. This academy here, the setup here for the academy and the quality of the young players in and around the area is very good. So it gives us a chance to have a look at them. It gives the young players a chance to impress the boss uh, and maybe stake a claim for a, for a first team slot. Maybe not a starting slot, but a squad slot, which is just as important as for, a, for a young player. It's the first step, you know, so the manager's uh, been able to impart on the players the way he wants to play. Start dropping little, little things into them about how he wants to do it why he's doing it, uh, as long as obviously surrounding the hard work, pre-season is hard work, a lot of running involved, that the lads are uh, they're putting the effort in, it's great, I mean I wish I was out there with them to be honest with you, so it's uh, the response that the players have gave the manager has been really, really positive as well. Look, to be honest, if we were struggling for players, you could almost jump on, you've literally just retired, haven't you? Yeah, it was January. I mean, I keep telling the boss he needs to sign me up, but he's, uh, <laughs> he's, uh, he's not going to give me that chance. Listen, I like involved. I like getting involved in the training sometimes and keeping taking over. But really, really enjoying the role since we came. Since we came to the country, it's been great, and it's, it's worked well for us so far. So it's uh, yeah, enjoying the role. Yep, you miss playing obviously when you're just when you've just finished and you've just hung them up. Uh, you do miss it, but there is it's a different kind of kind of high you get when you watch your, like the team that you're, that you're working with every day and you watch the players achieve good things that you've been working on with them through the week. It's, a, it's, a, it's really fulfilling, you know, when you see that coming to fruition on a Saturday. Now, you and Carl are great mates uh, for two decades. What's that chemistry like? When you start out, you know, you just, there's, there's steps that you need to take. You know, in my first step, I've always been someone I wanted to get there quick. You know, if, I was, if I'm going somewhere, I want to get there quick. Uh, it was no different when I, when I moved into, into professional football. I wanted, to get, I wanted to make it to that first team. So the steps to go through were through the youth team, through the reserve team, and you get the first team. When you get the first team, you've got to stay there. You know, pretty much I've, I've tried to have that right throughout my career. You know, was never the best, best technical football player in the world. Uh, that definitely improved with age. Uh, but in terms of work ethic, it was, it was always there. Celtic and Rangers, oil and water, it's religions, it's pathology, they don't like each other and you're in that rich band or that little group of people that has played for both. Yeah, listen, it was, football presents opportunities and like I said, I'm, I'm a winner and I've always wanted to win and I played for Rangers when I was young, I was 20 when I moved to Rangers, uh, walked into a an absolutely incredible dressing room filled with world stars at the time, not just like, not just good football, we're talking world stars here, Italian stars, Germans, Dutch, we had obviously a Dutch coach at the time and Dick Advocat and we had maybe six or seven Dutch internationalists in our team, you know, it was a top, top level dressing room, so I loved it, I realised my standards had to go up and I really loved it, but I was young and because of the, the amount of talent in that dressing room, game time, particularly the second season, became, it was made quite aware to me that it might not be as much as I would like. So I moved on and then a few years down the line the opportunity to go to Celtic came on and I never won anything that year with Rangers and that, that was always something that kind of stuck with me that you go to these clubs to be successful, you, you, you want to be a winner, you want to win leagues or and be in, and fighting for the cup competitions at the end of the season and we never won anything that year, it was, a, it was actually a poor year by the club standards and 
when the chance came to go to Celtic, it was an opportunity, like I say, that presents something, things for you. And I thought, you know, the club was in the Champions League. I'd already experienced that for one game with Rangers against Monaco. Uh, I managed to score within the first couple of minutes of my Champions League debut. That gives you a taste for things, you know. So it was an opportunity to play at that level again, which is the top level of uh, the game. Uh, win things, which in that year I did. Managed a league and a, and a cup. After three games of the Champions League that season, they used to do the thing on Sky Sports where they had like the leagues and then the top scorers and then it would go into the European competition. And I was I'd scored three goals in the first three games. And your your, your picture's up there with the with the best player. And you know that that's why you go to those clubs, uh, these big clubs, to, to play at that level. And that that was that was a, a big big part of the decision to win, to play at the top level. That's why I always want to test myself against the best. So it was an opportunity, like I said, and it was an opportunity I took at the time. Uh, I always had a feeling at the back of my mind at some point I would end up back at Rangers and sure enough it ha happened two years later when uh, Walter Smith, who was my international manager, mm. took over back at Rangers, Rangers legend, Scottish legend, he gave me the opportunity to go back so again it was another opportunity and you know the rest is history, I, I had three seasons then and I went back for another time for four seasons, I absolutely love it but the rivalry is fierce, you know it's absolutely fierce, it's uh, I mean, people will go to work every day and some will be Rangers fans, some will be Celtic fans and they'll mingle and they'll mingle and they'll get on with it. But come that weekend, it is, the gloves are off, you know. It's a, it's a proper, proper fixture. I mean, I loved it. Absolutely loved the fixture. Uh, it brought the best out of me. I was fortunate enough that I scored quite a few goals in them as well. So it was, uh, again, that was a big part of me potentially getting accepted back into the Rangers family for my first goals for the four Rangers back in 2008 were against Celtic at, at Celtic Park. So it was, uh, and that game can can make or break players, you know. So that said, I was pretty fortunate that I had a had a decent a decent spell in those games. What about that time at Wolverhampton? You talk about excelling. You talk about success. To be a part of that promotion. Yeah, the, the special times at Wolves. You know, it was real special times. It was a a, a wonderful group of players to be working with over that. Day. Uh, and that's also where I met the boss. You know, like it's it's an interesting story that when the morning that I signed my loan papers initially for Wolves from Rangers. We're driving at the training with the manager because I, I, I came down with Colin Cameron, another Scottish lad who signed the same time as me. We, he drove us down. So I signed the loan papers and Dave Jones had drive me, he, he drove me down to training. And the first person I bumped into in the car park was the boss. Carl. Carl, yep. And he took me up, showed me the, where the training room was, introduced me to the boys, and for that moment we clicked, you know, and remained good friends ever since. Uh, our paths have crossed over the, over the last uh, 18, 19 years. Obviously, he was my first team coach at Vancouver initially, and then he became the head coach. But what I've told, the story that I tell is that if it hadn't been for me, he wouldn't be here, because I scored two goals in his very first game as a manager against New York Red Bulls, and we won 4-1 four, four, we won that day. And I scored two, and uh, that set him on his, on his way to being a top coach. Well, it's gonna be a very different Christmas for you. You, you won't need any heating in the house, and uh, be a different diet, but obviously the, the season starts December 27. What can we expect from the Wanderers? Well, you can expect, again, the, the fans in Australia have had a little flavour of what the manager's about and, and what his, his, team, his teams are about. It's started to get the little details about how important it is that we do certain things right, that we understand why we're, we're doing them uh, and how we do them. That's already getting done and it's going to get stronger and stronger as the, as the pre-season goes on. Uh, we need players, again, we said that before, and there will be new arrivals will come in to help the group over the next, uh, over the next month or so. But, when that game comes around, I fully expect this team to be ready for it. They'll be fit. That's one thing's for sure. They'll be fit. They need to be fit to play top-level football. Uh, but they'll be well versed on, on what the manager wants and how he, how he goes about it. So, again, without sounding generic, it's, it'll be possession football. You know, the manager wants the ball. It's as simple as that. That's not giving any away any trade secrets. I think you've seen the way that his, his team played in Newcastle. He wants the ball. He wants to play good attacking football but there needs to be a structure behind it, which there will be. Again, work's already been getting done on that. We've got plenty of time to achieve it. If we don't, then that's on us, because it's up to us to get the message across to the players. But uh, come 27th, we'll be ready, and we'll be ready to play the brandy football that the manager wants to play. Can't wait to talk again. Thanks, Kenny. Thanks, Tim. No problem.